The demand for Model Ts quickly outgrew the Paquette plant's capacity to build them. In 1908, Ford asked famed architect Albert Kahn to design a new factory on Woodward Avenue in Highland Park, a small city surrounded by Detroit. We took the Mustang back to its ancestral home. We were going inside the famed Highland Park factory, a rare treat for any auto history lover. The Highland Park plant was the biggest ever built. People didn't believe something of that magnitude could function efficiently. When it opened on New Year's Day 1910, it was dubbed the Crystal Palace. The 860-foot structure had windows and skylights running its entire length. It was efficient and modern. By 1913, Henry Ford broke the 200,000 mark in Model T production. His invention, the first moving assembly line, made this possible. Conveyor belts transported small parts to the worker. They would install a bolt, and the piece would move on to the next workstation. Ford workers were able to complete a car in 93 minutes, an astonishing speed considering most automakers were still measuring their production time in days. In 1914, Henry Ford uttered those famous words, the public can have any color so long as it's black. Black enamel was the only finish that dried quickly enough for assembly line production. The Model T was a phenomenon. More than half a million Americans owned a tin Lizzie. But assembly line production was boring, noisy, and tedious. Ford needed to stem absenteeism and keep his production lines humming. On January 5, 1914, he implemented the $5 day, double the existing minimum rate. He also cut the workday from 10 hours to 8. The announcement sparked a riot as thousands showed up to claim one of the high-paying jobs. The pay raise shot the editors of the New York Times. They asked Ford if he was a socialist. The Wall Street Journal was aghast. Ford shrugged his shoulders and said, if you cut wages, you just cut the number of your customers. <laughs>